The plan is to enhance your smile with veneers, to increase the size, close the spaces, and also to go much lighter. She wants to aim for a Hollywood BL1 shade. We have a 41-year-old female that presents with some worn maxillary anterior teeth, some on the mandibular as well. And she's really just unhappy with the aesthetic appearance of her maxillary teeth when she smiles. You can see they are a bit worn, seven through 10, actually six through 11. All of these are relatively worn at the incisal edges. And she also wants to correct the diastomata between five and six. Uh, we, we want to get an idea of what we can achieve with this and where our possible limitations are. In order to do that, we create a diagnostic wax up. And just wanna let you see the wax up here. This wax up was created with the patient's ideal smile in mind. So the patient actually submitted a picture of what she thought was the ideal smile. And if we kind of compare the wax up that we created for her, it looks pretty similar. Uh, it's certainly longer at the centrals and what we consider aesthetically pleasing, slightly shorter laterals, uh, canines that have some prominence to them. From the wax up, it's important for us to be able to transition this or at least have the patient preview what this smile is gonna look like. So in order to do that, we create a putty matrix that is shaped to the wax up. So this putty matrix is created once that ideal diagnostic wax up has been made. And the putty matrix, we will then apply some bisacryl material into here and seat it on the patient, which you'll see, and at least have the patient trial fit this. They can wear it for a day, and I recommend actually having them wear it for a week. This way they can see if they're comfortable with the plan and sizal edge positions, the added bulk if there is any, and if just to see if their speech patterns are the same. There are several, several things that we want to look into, and certainly having their family's approval, friend's approval, uh, but usually this is a great way to have the patient get comfortable with the planned treatment. So whenever we seat the bisacryl, the excess material that flows out along the facial, once the entire matrix has been set, it's really easy to remove the excess material once it's scalloped. So that's just my preference. So after the patient's approval with the mock-up and we know what our limitations or where we're actually going with this case, uh, from there, I will apply the acrylic mock-up on the patient and actually prep directly through the mock-up. For me, prepping through the mock-up is one of the best ways to guide yourself on where tooth structure needs to be removed, where you may not need to remove as much material. So I recommend, highly recommend having a diagnostic wax up for all of your aesthetic cases. So I wanted to review the prep sequence that I went through for this case. Uh, based off the diagnostic wax up that we have and from the putty matrix, we create a mock-up that goes right over the patient's existing dentition. And since the mock-up is gonna guide us on the preparation, we prepare right through the mock-up on the patient. So I first create three depth cuts using an 850-014 burr. We make three depth cuts on all of the incisal edges. And I use more of the body of the burr, which is about 1.4 millimeters in diameter and create the depth cuts along the incisal. And then the tip of this burr is approximately 0.8 millimeters in diameter. So I create the depth cuts on the facial aspect first along the gingival margins, ensuring that I get down to where the tip of the burr is buried. And then I transition and round this over since the surface is flat. I create, ensure that the marginal depth cuts are created first, and then I will roll this over to the incisal edges on each of the teeth. And I create three along the facial and then one on each of the line angles to make sure that enough reduction is created in those aspects. So for the actual preparation, uh, this is what the finals look like. Uh, you can see here that with just a single cord, you'll see on the clinical video, a single cord was used to create enough retraction. All of the margins were brought right to the gingival margins, the free gingival margins on each of the teeth. And with one single size, one cord used to help displace the tissues apically. And you can see it also pushed the tissues out laterally, allowing the light body 
PVS material to flow into the sulcus and have that separation. Once the depth cuts have been marked, I switch to a larger 850-018 burr to expedite the finishing of the preparations.